Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about battery pack performance and essentially as it relates to the C rating that can be found on every single battery out there. Now you and I both know that battery pack C ratings are more of a marketing strategy to get you and I to purchase those batteries. We're gonna take a look at the best way to see and determine battery pack performance ultimately allowing us to better understand what is the best battery pack out there that allows us to get maximum performance. The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna take a look at a spreadsheet that exists on a website within a thread. The forum is known as the RC Groups Forum and it's within a specific thread that we're gonna open up here shortly within the video. Now this spreadsheet has been around for probably around a decade if my memory serves me correctly, where every single year we get a new set of data that represents the batteries that you can essentially purchase within that given year. Now all the batteries are tested in multiple different tests and then they go through a data collection and analysis and then spreadsheets are produced so that you and I can take a look at the data and decide for ourselves which battery we ultimately want to get. So props to the guys that keep this running and perform these tests. I know myself that it takes time producing these videos and it also takes time going through the test to get the data to collect it for everyone to use. I'm gonna first share with you where you can actually find this spreadsheet here online. And then once we understand the data collection process, how it was actually tabulated, we're gonna take a look at what the data inside means. There's multiple different performance parameters that you can follow. And depending on what you're ultimately trying to achieve, you may want to or prefer to use one performance parameter or data set over another. We'll go through a couple of the ones that I use. In addition to this, we're gonna take a look at a couple battery packs that have actually failed this test. If your criteria for failure is exceeding the 140 degree Fahrenheit mark at a specific load that it should definitely be rated for. We're gonna take a look at that and you'd be surprised to see the C rating that these packs are actually failing at. So stay in tune for that. That's gonna come near the end of our section where we take a look at battery pack performance and the failures of those packs. Let's jump into the data, take a look at the web website and go from there. Here is the website where we're going to take a look at a bunch of data. You can find this at rcgroups.com under the Aircraft General Forum, Batteries and Chargers Forum. And the specific thread we're going to be taking a look at is the Battery Load Test Comparisons thread. Now this thread has been created back in 2012 by MCS Guy. Every year he's putting out new data. This is the data that comes from this current year. The LiPo Battery Testing and Comparison for 2020. 2023. Now what I find very interesting is the very first thing that you see on this thread is a video and this video's title is the RC battery industry is scamming you exposing RC's biggest scam and within this thumbnail we can see fake news is being written here beside an image that shows a red circle around 70C which is the C rating that we have talked about earlier in this video. And we've done many videos as it relates to the C rating of battery packs and how they may not be exactly accurate. Now, if you haven't already heard of Tail Heavy Productions, these guys produce excellent video content, very good production quality. They take something that they're trying to explain and teach you and they make it entertaining. I would highly suggest giving these guys a view and a subscription here and check out all their videos that they have there on their channel. Channel. So let's take a look at the content that we're ultimately interested in and that's the amount of graphs that we see based off of the battery test. Now load tests here you can see are color coded from green to red where green is representing a 100 amp load and the red is representing 175 amp loads. Then we got increments of 25, 125 amp, 150 amp loads and how these batteries are loaded are based off of specific electric ducted fan airplane units. These are fan units that are in jets. This is a 100 amp load that the stock Avanti setup is going to give you as opposed to the 175 amp load that is done from a 90 millimeter Stumax electric ducted fan jet setup. So that's how these batteries are essentially loaded. They're loaded based off of these loads and then the data is collected as you run 
run the battery for 175 amps as an example for the entire duration of that battery pack. Now there's other data sets you can download here. This is a heat map that shows you in green areas where it's good and red areas where it's not so good in terms of performance. You can take a look at the 2023 engineering spreadsheets. This is done by another user and there's tons of information on why this spreadsheet can be helpful for you that you can read as well. Let's take a look at one of the versions here. We're gonna look at the 150 amp low. This seems like a really good number to just dive into and take a look at. We see that there's a bunch of different columns and I'm going to show you the columns that I specifically would pay attention to. Obviously the very first column calling out the battery pack as well as all the information about that battery pack. You should be able to recognize this specific pack and relate it to something that you can buy. The C rating is there, the capacity is there, and if it is a high voltage battery that operates at 4.35 volts per cell, it's going to be represented there as well. You got the price, you got the weight, which does come into play for some of us if weight is a concern. Then we get the amount of time that it takes for these batteries to get to 3.7 volts. This is when you have it fully charged. You apply this load and let the battery pack sit at this load. How long does it take until the cells reach 3.7 volts or 3.6 volts? Now in between these two parameters, we have what is known as the LPB, the LiPo power band parameter. I'd imagine this is something that the author or creator of this thread has created as a specification and the specification is defined as the amount of time that it takes to get to the 3.7 and I think also 3.5 volt mark. And then the root mean square is taken from a calculation there of those two parameters and this is the result that you get. Now ultimately a bigger number here is going to represent a battery that performs better for those specific parameters. This is a good way to understand the battery pack's performance in terms of how much power it can provide and the voltage that it's able to maintain, but this is not the only parameter that you could go by. Now let's take a look at some other parameters. This is the amount of milliamp hour that you're gonna get out of the pack to 3.5 volts. And keep in mind, this is loaded at that 150 amp. Everything that we're talking about is loaded at 150 amps, which is a significant amount of load for any battery, regardless of its C rating, regardless of its capacity. You can see here, if we look at the second battery pack or third battery pack, the SMC 5300, you can get 4,800 milliamp hour from that pack. If runtime is something that's important to you, and especially if it's loaded runtime, this is a parameter that you want to pay attention to. This might be your number one for selecting a battery pack. If you want to translate this capacity into time, right beside it here in the next column, we have the flight time in minutes and seconds. Now, another couple of parameters that you have here is peak amps, peak thrust. I don't pay attention to any of the parameters that are in thrust quantities because the thrust quantity ultimately comes from those fans that are being used for the load test and I can't relate that to my own setup. But what I can relate to my own setup is all the electrical parameters. Peak amps, this is something that probably happens just once in the run. This is the amount of amps that you get from that specific setup. A 150 amp test should produce 150 amps of load. However, if the battery pack is underperforming, you're not gonna reach that max or peak current that the best battery pack is able to perform. At. So you can see the difference in results as you look at the batteries here, the, the battery pack at the bottom, this is the poorest performing battery as it relates to this LPB value. It has a peak amperage of 128.5 when it's a 150 amp test, meaning that there's other batteries that perform around that 150 mark. So now we're going to take a look at, we're going to skip over these, we're going to take a look at the max temp, this is obviously the maximum temperature that these packs have reached. We're gonna be talking about this in more detail here in a second. Now thrust pound minute, this is a value again, it's related to thrust, I don't pay attention to this. However, what I do pay attention to is the watt minute. This parameter is probably what I would say is the number one best parameter to look at and consider for a specific battery pack if your ultimate goal is to look at performance, maintaining voltage for as long as possible for the entire duration of these packs. 
This is essentially the amount of watts that you get at the beginning, the end, and everything in between, and this value represents what that's going to be. A number that is larger or greater is going to be better here as it's related to each of these packs. You can see that there are some cases where a battery pack actually performs better and is lower on the list than the ones above it. That's because everything is organized based off of this LPB value. I want to come back to this and I want to talk about the maximum temperature because I think this is very interesting. Remember, we only have 150 amps being applied to these battery packs. In terms of amperage and the batteries that we're dealing with, this is a significant load. But relative to what the advertised C ratings are, this is nothing. If we take a look at what this actual battery should put out. We take the five amp hour, we multiply it by 100 C. This battery is saying that it should maintain 500 amps continuous. We got a fraction of that at 150 amps. If we take the 150 amps that we got here and we work out what the C rating of that is. We're gonna take the 150 amps and we're gonna divide it by the five amp hours. We're getting 30 C. This battery pack could not even perform at a C rating of 30. This is what goes to show you the battery packs that are displayed on these specific batteries are not accurate if these batteries are actually exceeding the maximum temperatures here under a load that is very small relative to what their rating says they should be good to. So if we go down to another one here, we get a battery pack that is of a 5,050 C, so it's gonna be the exact same it's got a 30 C load on it, and it shows that it got to 144, so it essentially failed as well. Now the Roaring Top 5800, this is a 35 C battery pack, and it also got to a very similar temperature, 145. However, this is a battery pack that essentially performs the same or very similar to a battery of a 50 C amount and a battery of a 100 C amount. So you can see that the battery packs really don't show a significant difference as it relates to a C rating, especially since this battery being a 35 C versus 100 C, this is essentially like three times the difference in performance now I wanna talk about some of these battery packs that are on the top of the chart. These are all SMC packs. And if you look at the temperature here that these have reached, the top one is showing 148 and the bottom, the third one is showing 144. Yet these have the best numbers as it relates to the performance parameters that we're interested in. So what is going on here? Well, there's a couple things that are going on here. These packs really can't perform up to the 150 amp rating continuously. They are not under the 150 40 Fahrenheit and they're deemed as unsafe at this specific draw. However, what you do have to note about this is that those packs are performing very good in terms of the parameters. When you go and use this pack in your application, you're not gonna be loading it at 150 amps continuous. You're more than likely gonna be much lower than this value in, in terms of continuous ratings, meaning that you should never see maximum temperatures of this high. You're gonna see temperatures that are lower more than likely than the 140 Fahrenheit mark. I think this is an important point to cover because we're not looking for the battery that has the best C rating here. We're looking for the battery that performs best for our application to make it reliable and to have really good performance within our pack. These packs, yes, they fail at 150 amps, but they are not going to fail if you're drawing an average of 75 to 100 amps for the duration of your pack. So keep that in mind when you're also looking. Don't let this scare you away if it does fail the test in terms of exceeding that 140 Fahrenheit 60 degree mark. Well guys, there you have it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Props to the guys that end up keeping this thread going, performing the test to allow us to review the data that they have collected. It is very good for the hobby and definitely helps out a lot of us to maximize performance and save the most amount of money that we possibly can as it relates to these batteries. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.